Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain dynamic range of quantization. Based on dynamic range, one can understand how to perform quantization. So first of all, let me explain the meaning of dynamic range. See, dynamic range is a ratio of largest to the smallest measurable amplitude. So first of all, you need to understand what is largest measurable amplitude and what is smallest measurable amplitude. Let me explain that by one example. So here I'll consider one sine wave and with this sine wave, if you perform quantization, then how many levels will be there? Total number of levels will be 2 to the power n. So from minimum to maximum, total levels will be 2 to the power n. If you talk about largest measurable amplitude, then that should be measured with respect to zero. So largest measurable amplitude, that will be 2 to the power n divided by 2 into delta. Here delta is step size. So if you talk about largest measurable amplitude, then that will be half of number of levels into step size, that is 2 to the power n minus 1 into delta. If you talk about smallest measurable amplitude, then that has to be delta by 2. Now question is why it is delta by 2? The reason is if you want to measure single step, then amplitude should be at least greater than delta by 2. Then one can consider we have received one step, right? So quietest measurable amplitude is delta by 2 and loudest measurable amplitude is 2 to the power n minus 1 into delta. Now if you want to measure dynamic range in terms of dB, then that will be 20 log of loudest amplitude divided by quietest amplitude. Now one more question is there. Why we are writing 20 log? The reason is here we are talking about ratio of amplitude. If we are talking about ratio of power, then here there should be 10 log of loudest power divided by quietest power. But here we are talking about ratio of amplitude. That's why it will be 20 log of loudest amplitude divided by quietest amplitude. Now let us substitute loudest amplitude that is 2 to the power n minus 1 into delta and quietest amplitude that is delta by 2. Here delta is getting cancelled. This 2 will go in numerator. So here we will be having 2 to the power n minus 1 into 2 that will be 2 to the power n. Now this n that will go in front. So we will be having 20 n log of 2. If you calculate 20 log of 2 then that will be 6.02. So dynamic range will be 6.02 into n. So practically dynamic range can be measured based on number of bits per sample. So based on quantization, one can define dynamic range that is 6.02 into n. Now let me try to explain why dynamic range is so essential. So for that, now I'll consider a case of human ears. Basic calculation of dynamic range is 6.02 into n and this calculation is there in terms of dB. If you talk about human ears, then theoretically threshold of hearing is 0 dB and threshold of ear is from 120 to 130 dB. So but obviously dynamic range that will be a difference in between these two that is 120 to 130 dB. But practically threshold of hearing is 0 dB and threshold of ear is 90 to 100 dB. So practical dynamic range of human ears that is there from 90 to 100 dB. Now based on this practical range, how many bits per sample should be there if you quantize signal? Then by 90 divided by 6, one can understand total number of bits per sample. But before that, let me give you some case studies. Like if you talk about voice of whisper, then that is there at 20 dB. So this signal that should be quantized at 4 bits. 
if you talk about normal speech then that is there at 60 db so it should be quantized at 10 bits per sample if you talk about rock concert then that is there at 110 db so here signal should quantize at 18 bits so if you have 8 bit audio then you may lose some information like if you have one music signal and with this music signal if you do quantization at 8 bits per sample in that case you will lose information for example if you talk about call on mobile and at other side if you listen some musics then on call you will be observing you are not having proper information why the reason is that voice communication that is been quantized at 8 bits per sample so usually when you receive any call by mobile then here whatever sound that you are listening over here that is having quantization at 8 bits per sample so even on mobile call if you listen to any music at the time you will be observing you are not listening that music properly there is a information loss right see if you talk about 16 bit audio then that works very well the reason is here we have a dynamic range as per 16 into 6 that is very nearer to our threshold right see if you talk about 24 bits audio quality so that is around 144 db that exceeds human hearing so that is mainly used for professional recording right now here let me show one graph see if you talk about 8 bit quantization so 8 bit quantization means 8 into 6 means 48 db so that is way below human threshold but if you talk about 16 bit quantization so that is around 96 db so that is well below human threshold and practically it is there up to threshold right but if you have 20 bits of audio quality so that is way beyond human threshold so even if you do quantization at 24 bits at that time you'll be observing there is no such difference in between 24 bit quantized signal and 16 bit quantized signal why the reason is human ears cannot separate those two signals right if you talk about dynamic range of telephone call then that is there from 35 to 40 db and here we are performing quantization at 8 bits only so on telephone call if you listen to music at that time you'll be observing that music is not there with proper quality the reason is on mobile call there is a quantization limit up to 8 bits per sample only so you cannot listen proper music by call so based on dynamic range now i think you are having fair enough idea about how one should perform quantization still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video